Now, if you take anything away from this video, it's that when you work for a tech company, you're either going to be working on the front end or you're going to be working on the back end. By the end of this video, you're gonna have a really good understanding of the different career paths available in tech and maybe you might even consider applying for one of those. Now I'm sure you're gonna find this video useful, so please do click the subscribe button and please do click the like button. And if at the end of the video, you're not quite happy, you can always unlike and unsubscribe. When it comes to software engineering and tech companies and websites and apps, ultimately you're building a piece of software. Now you might be building a mobile app, a website, an Apple Watch app, a app for an Android tablet, whatever it might be, ultimately you're building something and to build that thing, you actually have to build several different things. These can be grouped into two different areas, a front end and a back end. Now in another video, I explained what a front end is and I explained what a back end is. Feel free to give that video a quick watch and come back. But in short, a front end is what you see, whether it's the structure of the web page, the typography, the color schemes, the styles, everything that you see in front of you makes up the front end. A backend is part of the application that you don't see. It sort of makes everything work, whether it's searching for properties on Airbnb or viewing new posts on Instagram. All of that data needs to be processed and stored somewhere and a backend is responsible for making all of that work. Now, if you take anything away from this video, it's that when you work for a tech company, you're either going to be working on the front end or you're going to be working on the back end. Now, to start off with, one of the most common roles in the front end is what's known as a UI designer. UI stands for user interface and this is very much a designer that's going to be designing what the app or website looks like. Their job is to design all the different web pages or app screens including all the different buttons, the color schemes, the typography, uh, creating the icons from scratch, all of those different UI elements. They have to take the company's ideas and brand values and bring all of that together into a consistent and coherent design across the app or website. Now another closely related role that exists is what's known as a UX designer. UX stands for user experience and this is slightly different from UI design because this is more about understanding the journey a user will take when they come to your app or website. They have to think a lot more about the type of user that's going to visit your app or website and better understand how the design can facilitate for that type of user. Now you have UI designers and you have UX designers and in some cases especially in startups, they will typically look to hire a UI slash UX designer, in other words, someone that can do both. Now, another role that exists in the context of a company that's building a website is a front-end engineer otherwise known as a front-end developer. They're responsible for taking the design from a UI and UX designer and implementing it, writing the code to sort of bring it into reality. At the most basic level, a front-end engineer and developer will need to know HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. These are all the different languages that you need to know to build the structure of a web page, to style it with colors, to add icons onto it, to add all of the interactive elements that make up the front-end of a website. A front-end engineer also has to think about web performance, security, accessibility, all of these different areas that affect the user's experience when they visit your website. Now, all of that's great if you're thinking about building a website, but if a company is thinking about building an app, typically they'd hire for what's known as a mobile developer. A mobile developer essentially does the same thing in that they build the front end, but instead of building it for a website, they build it for the app. Now, a mobile developer typically would build the front end for an app on either an iPhone or an Android phone. Now the mobile development ecosystem has changed significantly in the past 10 years, so much so that it actually deserves its own video. But for now, if you're thinking about becoming a mobile developer or even a iPad developer or a Mac developer, you need to look into the Swift programming language. This is a language developed by Apple that's used to create apps for the iPhone, but also for the iPad too. Now, if you're looking to become an Android developer, then you need to look into Java or Kotlin. These are the languages used to develop Android apps. Now, in this mobile development space, there's a new role that's emerging, and that's someone being able to make an app that works on both iPhone and Android without having to learn two different languages. Instead of learning Swift and Java, you can learn what known as React Native, which is a framework built on JavaScript, or even Flutter. These are examples of frameworks that you can use to develop apps that run on both iPhones and on Android phones without having to learn two separate languages. 
Now it's time to talk about the back end. Now taking Airbnb as an example, if I search for properties in London, what happens in the background when I click search is that Airbnb looks for all of the properties that it has in its database that fit my search criteria. Now a back end engineer is responsible for writing all the code that does the handling, the processing, the storage, and all of that happens in the background. Now a back end can be written in different programming languages, and there are a ton of roles available for back end engineering. Typically companies will hire for a backend engineer that's familiar with one of these programming languages and is familiar with a framework that's used to build backend applications. For example, on a day-to-day -day basis, I'm a backend engineer and I write Python code using the Floss web application framework. Now you don't have to learn all the different programming languages and frameworks, just pick one, build a backend application, get familiar with it, and if you like it, you can pick up others along the way. Now once you've got your website or app ready, you need to deploy it and that process Process is known as deployment. Now to do this you need someone that's familiar with cloud technology, someone who has a good understanding of networking, of servers and bringing all of that together in order to be able to deploy your application and scale it as the needs of the company grows. Now typically in a startup a back-end engineer will have to do this job but in other bigger tech companies, they would usually hire for what's known as a DevOps engineer. Their responsibility would be to create a deployment pipeline such that you can deploy the application onto servers that live on the cloud. Now, a while ago, you didn't actually need to know how to code for this role, but that's quickly changing. Nowadays, DevOps engineers have to actually write code to be able to describe and configure their infrastructure. There are so many different tools that a DevOps engineer would use, Ansible, Packer, Terraform, the list goes on. Essentially, a DevOps engineer will ensure that your system is running safely and securely at all times. Now, for smaller companies, typically it ends here. You've got your front end, you've got your back end, and you might have a DevOps engineer. But for larger companies where users are growing and growing, whether it's in the thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions, and in Facebook's case, more than a billion. As a company starts to amass more and more users that use the app or website, they start to gather more data about their users. The data tends to be centered around how a user performs different actions on the app, and unsurprisingly, this can get very large very quickly. A data engineer is responsible for taking this messy, unstructured data and organizing and structuring it. This way it can be stored in a separate database system available for data scientists, analysts, or machine learning engineers to be able to easily understand and perform analysis on that data. They identify patterns and behaviors for users that reinforce and help a company make decisions about their products. This analysis Analysis then feeds back to the company so that they can make better data informed decisions about the direction of where they want to take their app or website. When I worked for a global company before, they had different data sets coming from countries around the world. They then would have to organize structure and load that data into a separate database that was made for querying and more advanced analysis. Typically for this role, you need to have a good understanding of a scripting language like Python, and also you need to have a good understanding of database technology like Hadoop or Apache Spark. Now a fairly newish role that's been evolving more and more over the past couple of years, it's what's known as a machine learning engineer. It's a newer branch of technology where machine learning engineers will write algorithms to create programs that sort of learn and teach themselves. It's pretty new and exciting and it's being spearheaded by some of the big tech companies like Google, Facebook, Uber, but also startups too. As an example, Google Home is a device that I use on a daily basis to ask questions about everything from recipes to playing YouTube videos on my TV. As you can imagine, on a daily basis, Google are amassing massive data sets on being able to understand exactly what users are searching with their voice. Machine learning engineers will then take and analyze that data and write algorithms that can help the Google Home to get better at giving you results over time. On a side note, there's a reason why these are so cheap. Google wants everyone to have one of these in their homes so that they can amass data that will help them improve their products and their services. Now the last role I'm gonna cover is what's known as a QA engineer. 
Now, Quality Assurance Engineer is responsible for making sure a mobile app or website is bug free, it's ready to go out there to be used by people around the world. Their responsibility is to write test specifications and even write tests and work with automation softwares to ensure that an application, whether it's an app or a website, is production ready. So when a user uses an application, it doesn't crash or it's as bug free as it can be. Now, a QA engineer tends to be quite specific. So you have mobile QA engineers, you have web QA engineers, and each one has different languages and tools and frameworks that are used. A QA engineer for a backend application will need to have a very good understanding of unit testing, integration testing, functional testing, all the different types of testing. Each of these will have their own frameworks and libraries for being able to write and automate tests. They'll report directly back to the engineering team so that they're aware of any bugs or issues with the website or the app. Right, I hope this video gave you a better understanding of all the different career paths available in tech. If you did enjoy it, please do give it a like and please do subscribe and tap the bell icon Icon because I'll be making many more programming in tech videos just like this. In the meantime, thanks a lot for watching. Have a lovely day and I'll see you next time. See ya.